Okay, we can start now. Okay, uh, hi everyone. Uh, today I'm going to, to start the, the paper tone. Uh, okay, so uh, I was searching about uh, the devices and methods that uh, different uh, countries and, and, and groups uh, use to to perform studies in 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 GIST. so I found this is a is a small review called uh, microfluidic technologies for GIST replicative lifespan studies. So uh, we have to 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 know that an individual mother cell can divide only a finite number of times, uh, and it's called a replicative lifespan. So uh, the standard replicative lifespan as I, uh, as I uh, has become a rate limiting uh, step in the process of yeast aging research. And these studies uh, exploit the size difference between mother cells and newborn daughter cells or the body patterns of mother cells, uh, generally uh, allowing a fluid flow to selectively uh, remove uh, mature daughters. So the uh, the, ef the effective removal of undesired cells is crucial to prevent the device from becoming overgrown with multiplying progeny when uh, coped with uh, time-lapse uh, microscopy. These devices uh, allow both uh, measurement of replicative lifespan and observation of physicality physiological changes as they uh, trap cells age. So uh, to, to know uh, a typical lifespan experiment using a microfluidic device uh, uh, at the standard at uh, 30 Celsius conditions uh, last uh, about the two to five days and in contrast uh, with the classical uh, methods like uh, micro dissection experiments, uh, the cells are incubated at 40 degrees uh, overnight and can last up to three weeks. So we can we can we we, we can see that uh, it's 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 better than this this new technology, uh, the the microfluidic technologies. So uh, what about the the device designs? They they tell, tell us uh, uh, four or five uh, designs. And I'm going to talk uh, about a little bit about this. Uh, the, the chemical and mechanical trapping uh, in, this, in, in this design, the device used uh, both mechanical constraints and biotin abiding affinity. So after loading, uh, the mother cells are immobilized both uh, mechanically squeezed between the PDMS uh, sailing and the glass floor of the chamber and uh, chemically glued to the glass floor by the interaction of the cells uh, biotin and the device abidin. So the fluid flow uh, removes a smaller or uh, biotin free daughter cells. Uh, the, uh, another design is the vertical mechanical trapping by pencil columns and microbats. Uh, I'm gonna show you the, the, the graphics so you can know. The, the, the A is the, the, first, the first design, the chemical and mechanical trapping. B is the vertical mechanical trapping by pencil columns, microbats. And in, in this one, the, the designs use purely geometric measures to selecti selectively uh, trap mother cells. So uh, the cells are loaded at high pressure. And One minute left. When the pressure is released, the cells are trapped and the mother cells are uh, retained over the smaller daughters uh, because of the size difference. Uh, the other one is the trapping between two columns and this one is the 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 c in the in the in the graphic in the in the image uh this one uh, 
when a cell suspension is flow, flowed uh, into the device, uh, individual cells are caught between the two columns with a continuous and unidirectional fluid flow keeps uh, each mother cell immobilized against the columns. So this device exploits the, uh, the same uh, size and difference between a uh, mother and other cells. So um, another one is the dropping in a three column jail and uh, it's called a GIS replicator device and also use vertical floor to sail in columns to trap individual cells. Uh, so uh, in just to, to finish the this presentation, uh, coupled with time labs microscopy, uh, these devices allow researchers to more easily collect uh, replicative lifespan data. And moreover, uh, when combined with fluorescently uh, labeled proteins or dyes, uh, researchers can track changes in cell physiology. And I think we can use this information uh, to, to perform uh, our studies. So thank you. Uh, I'm going to stop my presentation. That's it. Okay. Thank you, Juan Far. Uh, Eric, can you present? Okay, Adria, I will say thank you. I'm going to share my presentation. So, can you clearly see my screen? Yes. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay, good morning, everyone. Today I'm going to, to talk about the efficient machine learning model to predict the, the disorder of autistic spectrum. In this paper, it's going to try to identify whether a person is a having autistic spectrum disorder or not, based on, on screening data of patients. To, uh, to early detection is required the, the most effective models uh, in this way, different statistical and machine learning models are applying to, to find out disorder. Um, autism based on a group of uh, neurodevelopmental issue known as per pervasive developmental disorder. Now, uh, we will see the, the, the proposed methods to identify the, the autistic disorder. A data set was created which has this set of question and an aspect of personal health, health condition. Based on this, we, we can say uh, that he's suffering the, the disorder. Furthermore, algorithms such as uh, Kane nearest neighbors, uh, NACE uh, patient, support, um, support vector machine, support vector machine. Um, uh, decision three, Identifying the, the autistic spectrum disorder for classification were just as we see following. Uh, with this in mind, figure one provides information about a set of data classify, uh, classify, classify into categories. Uh, the KAN algorithms take the following steps to, to determine to which category the new data to be classified belongs. That means it selects the numbers of K neighbors, takes the, the K closest neighbors to the new element according to the Euclidean distance. Um, at the same time, among the K, K neighbors comes the numbers of elements that belong to each category. And finally, it assigns the new element to, to the category where the most neighbors were counted. Uh, regarding support support vector machine, this is a model that re represents uh, the points of of the, the sample in the space, separating uh, the classes in two in two spaces, but mean on separation hyperplane. In the following picture, uh, you can see two classes of focuses, red and blue, that are in two dimensional 
component space in the event that both the x and, and y estimation of a point and underneath uh, phi. At that point, is, the fact is blue. In every single other case, uh, the fact uh, of the matter is red. Now uh, we are going to, to talk about the, um, the proposed methodology. Uh, in this case, uh, a data set was used uh, belong to autism disorder of people having 20 features to use feature analyze to find them uh, dominant uh, autistic traits and classify the DAASD. Uh, social correspond in direction uh, behavior included in sufficient, in sufficient eye contacts, uh, learning not to loot or or check out people, just sharing, joining scenes or activities by pointing or not expressible, uh, nor immediate response if someone called, among others. So after the after the database uh, it was applying preprocessing techniques to handle missing data and remove unwanted uh, finally uh, a compare was made the, the result uh, produced by model and was concluded which method is producing good results one minute left okay um it was just a seven percent of data training purpose means a uh, 493 data assemblies are given to this purpose to understand by supervised learning model. Uh, as a final conclusion, uh, we could say that does this project uh, make work easy, easy for doctors by providing the set of questions uh, that have to, to understand, uh, that have to be answered by the, by the patient and based on the answer of his health detail, we can conclude that the person is suffering with astic uh, disorder or not. In this way, a uh, support vector machine is producing 90% uh, for accuracy in identify uh, the cases. Uh, key AN is 86, 7% uh, and nay beige, uh, 89% and decision three, 88% uh, providing accuracy. As we can see uh, from on all observation, support support vector machine providing good accuracy in future uh, database size increased uh, and also apply different deep learning techniques to uh, identify the autistic uh, spectrum disorder in case to get more uh, accuracy thank you for your attention Hi, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I'm here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to show you this paper uh, called Separation and Enrichment of Yeast Gourmet Service Shape Using Viscolastic Microfluidics. Well, in this paper, um, uh, they try to show how the non um uh, fluid can be used to separate uh, the different the different stage or shapes of, of the yeast in a, uh, a microfluidic device. Well, uh, um, in this uh, in this uh, experiment, and they try to separate the the to test the the separation efficiency, the cell extraction yield. And cell viability after certain separation uh, under the different conditions. Um, the the yeast can be influenced the the shape and the and the um, uh, and the dynamic of the of the bio the biology dynamic of the yeast can be influenced. Uh, 
by the the, the environment and uh, this is a uh, use uh, to study uh, the, the the downstream genes expression uh, but uh, we have another another techniques for example um, uh, uh, that we need an uh, a complex network of microstellar structures for this work they use a simple chamber a simple channel and uh, and two a two uh, and, and two uh, fluids the first one is the viscoelastic of a uh, viscoelastic fluid uh, a non-newtonian uh, viscoelastic fluid that uh, and we have an, uh, a design with two inlets and in England A, they uh, they seed the the yeast, and uh, in the inlet beam they uh, introduce the another the viscoelastic fluid, and the viscoelastic fluid is a polyethylene oxide, and uh, uh, with different concentrations. They obtain a lot of uh, of of data, um, and this is a basically a, a full of mathematics and physics uh, a study. And uh, but uh, the result is that uh, they uh, they can separate and or sort the 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 different shapes uh, a single yeast a double yeast is this here um, it means it means um building yeast and clusters of, of yeast um the different shapes of flow rate uh, uh, depends of uh, in the conditions of the flux it means a uh, we are uh, we're talking about um, unknown Neptunian flow. That means they don't have um, uh, uh, a, uh, a rate of viscosity. Uh, it depends of the flux. Depends of the of the rate of the flux. Um, so here we can see um, that uh, with uh, with uh, a normalized lateral position that uh, that means that in in this part when we have a more uh, a more flux uh, uh, rate well, we don't have uh, uh, thank you uh, we don't have a yeast on the, the lateral position. But we have a, a lower a flux rate. Uh, we have a, a good selection, a, a good uh, um, sorter of, of the yeast. And so, in in another in another case, uh, with PEO concentration, this uh, viscoelastic flux, we have a uh, different. A different results in this in this case with uh, 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 with more flux uh, with more um, a concentration we don't have a lateral position but we we have a uh, uh, in intermedial uh, values we have a, a good uh, sorting so here we can see the the live uh, the living cells when uh, because we have um uh, uh seven outlets and the outlet one and low outlet the uh, seven uh, we extract the the viscoelastic flux uh, the non neutronal flux but in the central outlets we obtain mm, the sorting the sorting cells to prove if they are alive and uh, so in this case and when we have uh, in, in the o4 we have the more rate of living cells 
in conclusion, uh, this, uh, this design uh, it can be used to sort in cells by the uh, living stage. It means in single cell or uh, um, doublets or clusters, and uh, we can and they can sort in if they are living or dead cells. In this, in this case, uh, uh, yeast. That's all. Thank you. Okay, I will talking about of this paper called uh, Automations of C Elegance Lifespan Measurement. Uh, well, aging is a fundamental biological process that is not yet fully understood. Uh, the standard methods have been uh, developed uh, to assess survivorship in C Elegance, but they are tedious and time consuming. This review presents a current advance in methods for analyzing lifespan in C. elegance. And I will focus on methods that use micro 3D device to automate data collections. Uh, regarding a microfabricate approach, um, this allow continuous recording radar that intermittent observations. As seen in this figure, Uh, the general designs of microfluidic device includes in inlets uh, for the additions of fresh liquid media and food, outlets for removing weights, eggs, and progeny, and one or more zones for housing and examinate uh, C elegance. Uh, and among these uh, devices are War Farm, this used for automate measurement of longevity pulse, life, uh, body size, and motility. In this figure, uh, you can see that it includes uh, three models. Uh, the first is a model for loading feed and medium uh, continuously throughout the, the lifespan. The second model uh, has the worms throughout uh, the experiment and has several size exclusions uh, outputs and allow larvae and eggs to be removed while uh, adult worms are retained. And the third model is for image acquisitions with other uh, with collections, videos, and photos uh, of the worms inside uh, their chambers. Um, now, a uh, worm model for tracking behavior uh, and lifespan. This device has a small concave wells that use a single worm to un, uh, allow a good view of the worms from above in all positions. These are surrounded by wells containing a copper sulfate solutions to prevent movement of the nematodes out of the wells. In this method, each well is filled with NGM agar with, uh, and bacterial food. And this also provides a mechanism to generate, generate survival data. This approach uh, uses a polymerized uh, polyethylene glycol layer uh, overlaid with drops of warm medium, each containing a single worm and coat with BDMS. Uh, the lifespan on, on a chip. Uh, this device measurement uh, lifespan and uh, behavioral and phys uh, physiological phenotypes and use chambers to contain worms with inlets uh, and outlets. In addition, uh, this device uh, can incorporate a wedge shaped channel 
as a plan to longitudinally immobilize individual worms and allow imaging or laser micro dissection surgery. Uh, for automated measurement of reproductive aging, use uh, the graphical programming environment LabVIEW and MATLAB. Uh, regarding uh, flavored, flavored scanner uh, based approach, uh, this includes a uh, worm scan. One minute. Uh, the system uses a modified Epson perfect, uh, Perfection uh, B700 photographic scanner uh, that takes some images of a field of plates over the course of a few minutes and compares the consecutive images uh, to observe the, observe the worms that have uh, moved. For the analysis, they use Wicca segmentations and analyze, analyze a skeleton from the PG package to determine uh, the size and movement of the worms. Um, yeah. uh, C elegance lifespan machine. Uh, like the previous one, uh, it also used a scanner with the modifications that allows to regulate the, the head produced by the internal components of the scanner to be housed in a room or incubator with controlled temperature. And finally, um, Wormbot uh, that is um, a robotic system that scores the lifespans of worms. And the system uses robotic parts, uh, a standard Linux server, open source software, and welcome to monitor the worms uh, during the course of the experiment. Uh, in conclusion, these approaches are currently under rapid development. It is likely that the methods described here will play an important uh, role uh, in analyzing aging, aging in C. elegans and perhaps in our understanding of the conserved biology of aging in, in general. Uh, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Can you see my presentation? Yes, 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 we see. Thank you very much. Today, I'm talking about pH characterization in large scale macro photometry for high resolution pH using electrosmotic filtering pumping a molar micro switch. In this paper, the, the, the authors study uh, the reaction with the pH gradient with the two systems. Or, or situation on collective motion. First, pumping, pumping micro, microfluidic pumping, and the second, modulus microfluid. In the the, the paper uh, uh, in 
evaluate the performance of the method and release in that case. The microfluidic pump is introduced that we trace amounts of time of the generate fluid flows. Approximately of my micrometers, micrometers seconds, only hundred micrometers. Microfluidic pumps are consistent with the electrosmotic pumping range, young concentrate. In these systems, we need to see the diffusion force is the dominant forensic motion. The last, the last paper from I talk about is this point. Uh, and today I want to study this more, more deeply. Absorbent, in, on the other hand, absorbent is obtained by measuring the intensity of transmit and incident light on the sun. And, and they calculate the absorbent with this equation. With that relationship with intensity of the wave, incident of the sample, and the intensity of the transmitted wave, or of the after, after the eliminate the sample. U U is the current dependent attenuation coefficient and C is the concentration of the absorbing angle. And D is the optic way, optic particles. In the absorbance in after to speaking with the different channels. In this case, a blue, red, and green channels. Or uh, separate the colors, the, the colors on the fundamental colors in the system, in the optic system. Uh, after. Uh, One minute left. Okay. The pH is calculated with the relationship of uh, axolans, experimental axolans. And pH is obtained with the paper method, uh, method, experimental tool. And after uh, you, you must relation twice twice uh, twice result. In these figures we, we we can see that and after the calibration uh, you in uh, they 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 measuring measuring the gradient of pH and the solution with, um, with the microfluidic pumping. And this result is plotted with pH versus, versus ratio of the screen. And um, this field, the, the green, gray colors indicate the values of the pH. In, in these figures, the same is the same experiment is in this in that in that plot 
screen. Name with micros, micro swimming model. And you can see the variation of the gradient in, together in, together the motion indicated by red arrow. Vector. Okay, in conclusion, in our project, in the lab, we need to create our saturation curve knowing the concentration of solution, of color solution in our experiment in the pH project. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Um, the title of the of the re, of the research paper I chose is Ecotox, "Ecotoxicological Assessment of DNA Tag Silica Particles for Environmental Tracing." And here in this graphical abstract, you can see how the DNA tracers are promising tools to get information about a fluid. Um, in this case, you see in this aquifer, we have a green algae and also planktonic crustacean, which are, um, which are going to help us to know about the ecotoxicological effects of these DNA tracers. So um, here the authors use Daphnia magna um, to show the mobility effect of the DNA tracer during um, 88 hours, and also another crustaceans like Seriodaphnia species uh, to see chronic effects, and green algae as Radiocellis subcapita, subcapitata during 72 hours. Okay, so the um, DNA tracers are important because they help us to know the flow path, the formation, heterogeneity, and the flow rate. These parameters are going to, to be really helpful for the industry in order to avoid ecotoxicological effects. Okay, so here you can see the, the um, organisms that they used, for, for example, for immobilization test, and growth inhibition, and growth population. So these DNA tracers are bonded to nanoparticles, silicon nanoparticles. So here the authors um, synthesized different size um, nanoparticles and they inject them. So the first, the tracer injection you can see here is 100 ppm. And then when it goes down through the aquifer, the, trace, the tracer is diluted and then we collect the tracer and, then, and also the planktonic crustaceans and green algae. So uh, here are the um, electronic microscopy, the scanning electronic microscopy images obtained from these silica nanoparticles that they synthesize in three sizes. So here you see the small ones, the medium, and the large ones. Then they measure the size distributions of these nanoparticles with a, a dispersion light scattering. And you can see that the dimensions and the distribution of the sizes of the small, medium, and large silica particles. And then um, with these um, serial Daphnia dubia, we can see the chronic toxicity, how it affects in the population growth. So as you can see here, um, while the concentration of the silicon nanoparticles is low, um, it, it um, doesn't affect the population growth. And you can see that with these uh, small, medium, and large silica nanoparticles. So here are the parameters that they uh, consider. 
the surface potential, the diameter, and uh, the, this barcode that is like a unique and code to identify each of these particles. Okay, so they also um, tr uh, made um, essays with uh, random DNA. So you can see here that the population growth is not affected in this um, Sirio Daphne Adubia. While the concentration increases, uh, there's no a significant effect. Then when we measure the population growth with these uh, nanoparticles functionalized with uh, DNA, and um, these, these ones in the, the green square are nanoparticles uh, functionalized with DNA that have a, a extra layer to coat them and protect them from, One the, minute left. from, the, thank you, from the oxygen species. And the population growth is, is not affected either. And then if we increase the concentration, so they have, um, they have an, in the algae, they have a chronic effect and accurate exposure limit was also determined as you can see how it um, decreases the growth population of this algae here especially when we use a concentration um, um, higher than 100 ppm and finally um, they um, they uh, concluded that uh, these nanoparticles are it doesn't have an effect and they use these um, assays with the standard ISO um, conditions and they, they, they uh, concluded that there is a small risk uh, for these organisms when they are exposed to these um, materials. Okay, thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. I present this uh, research. Um, the author presents a novel application of machine learning algorithms in order to compare with logistic regression. The paper title is Comparison between Logistic Regression and Machine Learning Algorithms on survival prediction of traumatic brain injuries. So in this, in this paper, um, the application of algorithms is uh, in uh, clinical uh, injuries. So um, the authors present the comparison of 21 algorithms uh, of machine learning in order to predict the survival of patients uh, when they, says they suffer a uh, traumatic injury. Uh, in this case, the data set is composed by 117 patients with a characteristic uh, present in table uh, one, uh, with a specific uh, years, with a specific temperature, the number of males of females is uh, described in this table. And the principal idea is compare uh, the performance of different algorithms in order to uh, predict the, um, per the percentage of survival. So um, together with the characteristic of patients, the risk uh, also evaluated uh, for these algorithms. Uh, so um, the risk, uh, according to the injured, can divide it in different uh, amount of uh, characteristic in table two, in table two, the risk are presented. So the um, algorithms uh, can be evaluated with multivariate uh, method. So uh, the um, main uh, uh, training algorithm is used to uh, divided the data set into subsets and name it our um, training sets and evaluate set. So the um, results of evaluated are um, 
evaluated according to five uh, metrics in the table five the results are presented in all cases the accuracy of algorithms are up on to uh, zero four zero two uh, dot five uh, percent um, in this uh, graphic the area the area uh, under the curve that represent the probability of uh, effectiveness accuracy uh, prediction is presented where a uh, cubic and linear and quadratic super vector machine are the best uh, algorithms the, in order to predict the survival patients in this study uh, the evaluated are um, evaluated with uh, the tr um, table with the classification matrix where the data or outcomes are the run through run through is the uh, very used uh, form to uh, evaluate the algorithms so um, in this graphic the the probability of effectiveness prediction are presented uh, logistic regression and uh, the best algorithms of machine learnings uh, based on super vector machine are presented uh, in all cases the prediction are open uh, 0 0.91 uh, percent one minute left so um so um, in this case, the probability is uh, highest. Finally, the comparison of uh, decision curve is presented where the uh, performance of algorithms is very uh, uh, highest according to this problem. So, um, in this case, super vector machines uh, are the best algorithms in order to predict the survival of patients, uh, analyzing and data characteristics and risk according to the data. Thank you. Hello everyone, uh, I'm going to be presenting uh, this paper, Comparative Analysis of Yeast Replicative Lifespan in Different Trapping Structures Using an Integrated Microfluidic System. But as it was explained in the first paper presented, to obtain information uh, for a replicative uh, lifespan and cell cycle data, elaborate geometric structures are used to trap and immobilize the mother cells while Flowing medium separates and washes away the daughter cells that are produced. And there are many different methods. There are two main kinds, the mechanical trappings that rely on physical constraint and the hydrodynamic trappings that set uh, intercepting structures in the direction of flow to trap and immobilize these uh, mother cells. And in this paper, they have uh, developed a multi-structure microfluidic system that integrates the four representative uh, trapping structures. In this case, uh, it's the microbytes, microbats, microchannels, three bar jails, and two bar cups that uh, will permit a direct comparison of the replicative span of uh, this trapping using the same uh, conditions. They, uh, well, the first thing they did is they tested uh, cell loading efficiency and mother cell rotation rate of each trapping. And the cell loading efficiency of the four structure was roughly the same. But in uh, microchannels, three jail bars, and two bar cups, they had a similar rotation rate. But in the micropads, the rotation rate was uh, around 40% uh, lower, as you can see in image F. Uh, they later uh, monitor the complete lifespan on cell division dynamics of uh, trapped cells using a reporter 
and uh, they saw that uh, survival rates uh, curves indicated that uh, there are some discrepancies in the uh, replicative lifespan obtained in these trappings. Then there is a moderate decline in, in the ones measured in the uh, micropaths. Uh, then they also compared the cell cycle dynamics on these trapping structures and they saw that uh, cell division data show that uh, the trappings, uh, they were uh, indistinguishable, implying that none of these uh, four structures affected the uh, normal growth of the yeast cells. So they speculated that uh, these uh, discrepancies can be attributed to uh, different mechanical stress of the cells caused by uh, the trapping structures. So uh, they performed simulation to evaluate the mechanical stress using uh, Comtol. The, uh, well, the mechanical stress of in the cells is mainly derived from pressure generated by the fluid and the squeezing force between the cells and the PDMS. And uh, the size, uh, in this case, in the size of uh, the three uh, structures well, was larger than uh, the average size of the cells. So they didn't experience uh, intense compression, but in the micropaths, the average cell size was larger than the distance between the epidemia ceiling and the glass floor. So in addition to the fluid pressure, there was also mechanical uh, compressive stress. So the simulation uh, results suggested that cells under the uh, micropaths experienced greatest uh, mechanical stress. They also performed experiments to uh, to see this in uh, image five at the left, uh, they uh, estimated the relationship between the repetitive lifespan and the mechanical stress, not only from their experiment, but also for, uh, from several published papers. And then they uh, measured the expression level of uh, stress response transcription factor. One minute left. Okay. And this method provided an, inter an indirect measurement of uh, mechanical stress experienced by these cells. So you can see it, that the micropaths had the highest uh, stress of the cells, and there were no significant difference in the performance of the other three structures, which uh, this, the examination of this relationship between mechanical stress and re repetitive, repli repli <laughs> sorry, replicative light spans from this different pr perspective, they uh, verify that mechanical stress is uh, detrimental to the lifespan. And finally, they investigated how the trapping structures affect the, when using strains that have reduced stress tolerance. And uh, well, they saw that for strains that have reduced stress tolerance are, my, more, are much more susceptible to environmental changes so uh, the accuracy of the data will decrease if you use uh, micropaths. Therefore, the micropath trapping method is not suitable for uh, aging-related experiments, especially on strains with uh, poor stress tolerance. Uh, that would be all. Thank you. Mm, okay, um, this is my presentation. Uh, surface acoustic ways enable rotational manipulation of C elegans. Um, rotational manipulation precious is found in these organ knives. It is very important in some biomedical applications. Uh, this chip is acoustic fluid capable of rotating in a static and continuous um, uh, fluidic in a controllable way. Um, uh, the manipulation um, the manipulation was achieved by exposing the world to a file of surface acoustic waves, um, SAW, uh, which generate a better distribu distribution in the channel. Um, a clear image were obtained of C. elegans uh, dopaminergic neurons as well as muscles and fibers. Uh, la, um, 
layout online. Uh, in this part, uh, figure 1A, the chip consists of a single layer, a PDMS microfluidic channel with one input and uh, one output. Um, Interdigital traducers, uh, IDT, found uh, on lithium neobate, can be loaded and unloaded. Uh, this part, a uh, figure um, 1B, uh, the IDT is connected with means of uh, a radio frequency signal to then propagate to the PDM PDMS channel and induce an acoustic transmission inside. Internal borders were developed uh, with, uh, between the PDMS microchannel, um, which, which is used to rotate C elegance in a certain direction. Uh, in figure 1C, a traveling saw generated by the left IDT uh, travels to the right, propagates through the channel, uh, results in counter uh, clockwise vortex. Uh, orange circle. Um, when the IDT is excited, we can rotate the elegance clockwise. Um, okay. Um, this part. Okay, this part. Um, a rot a, well, rotational manipulation of the elegance uh, is demonstrated with also device uh, when an RF signal was applied to the right IDT. The word was first dried into the pressure node. A fuel for B, the voltage induced by the acoustic transmission rotate continuously along the pressure at C elegance. A when this a disactivated the right IDT, the word moved to the line of the lead pressure node and they rotated continuously in the direction of the vortex, a uh, figure 4C. Um, the D result show that by activating the IDT, you can rotate C elegance in opposite directions. Um, and this part, uh, in, figure, in figure 7, to demonstrate the ability of the chip to make 3D image of C elegance with fields examining neurons from the uh, C elegance strain, uh, which produced by Green Florence all, all, uh, um, only in eight dopaminergic neurons. L4 words were continuously rotated to obtain Florence image of neurons. Uh, figure uh, 7a, um, uh, two of the four neurons are observed. Uh, figure 7b, after turning um, 90 grades, image of four ADE neurons were taken and the distribution of neurites around the ADE neurons were derived by combine, combining uh, figure 7a and 7b. Uh, One minute. This part, uh, figure 7C, uh, turn 135 grades and show four uh, bendrits. Uh, figure 7D, before one rotation, uh, vulvar muscles are shown. Um, in figure 7E, uh, turn um, 45 grades, observe the muscular fibers. And the figure uh, 7F, uh, we kept turning the woman um, 90 grades. All, all, all bulbar muscles were found in the front. Many muscles fibers were observed. In conclusion, uh, a saw based method has been developed for precise and controllable rotational manipulation of C elegance. Uh, can rotate worms in a continuous flow. It is suitable for high performance applications. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks. Uh, you have a question? Um, yes, I have a question uh, for uh, Juan Fernando. Um, please, can you explain me? Um, 
um, what do they use to measure the the changes in the size uh, like which tool or how do they um, report the the morphology changes of the yeast in the microfluidic devices you presented hi anita uh, well um this i can i can show you but this i i think uh this is is a small review so i i, I didn't see the the paper that they uh, refer about that so uh, I, I can uh, show you the 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 image let me let me see so uh, which of of the which of the of the um, designs are you interested? The one that has the pillars with a yeast a trap it between them. Okay, uh, I think we we can we 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 can I don't know uh, download the <laughs> the 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 proper uh, paper because. You, you can see uh, it's 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 it, it's it's a small discussion about the 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 the, the designs and and not the, the the results of the of the paper and how they measure this. Okay. Uh, uh, in my paper, they use a reporter. Uh, a protein, MCM protein, that is located only in the nucleus. So uh, it, it shows when it's in this G phase, G1 phase, it's only a dot. And um, uh, on the other phases, you can see the whole cell uh, red, and uh, you can see uh, the, the size of the, of the yeast because of it. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, I, I think uh, they, they know that for example, uh, in, in, in in several cases, uh, the they use the the typical size, the uh, five micrometers to 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 use in and 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 to design the the, the chambers. So uh, they are uh, they they made uh, a little bit less. So the mother cells that are bigger than the other cells uh, because of the fluid flow get uh, trapped. And I think uh, that's it. And the, the, the other cells uh, flow, flow and, and, and get out. I, I, don't, I don't know how, 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 how much. Uh, uh, I, I think they, they, they use the, the the different size of the mother and the other cells. That's it. Thank you very much. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have another question uh, for Giovanni. Um, Giovanni, uh, which is the, the principle that makes the um, acoustic signal, um, how it makes it rotate, how it makes the C elegans rotate clockwise? Which is the principle? Ah, okay. Um, uh, using this device, um, uh, we have clearly made to uh, dopaminergic neurons of C. elegans uh -huh, with the um, Florence green protein expression, uh -huh, as as well as the uh, vulva muscles and muscle fibers on the world. Uh -huh, with uh, uh, protein expression in in different orientation and three dimension uh -huh. and um, uh, these uh, uh, key women are uh, div difficult to realize a uh, town conventional microscopy uh -huh. um, uh, the, uh, and the so manipulation uh, uh, didn't uh, uh, detectable affect the health of the model organisms Okay, so is it correct that um, the acoustic signal makes the fibers, the muscular fibers, to contract? 
Eh, yes, ok. Um, eh, Inés y uh, in, um, in, uh, este wise fashion with este bangle as a uh, small as uh, four grace, uh, four grace by uh, pulsing the signal duration of south for from a continuous signal uh, to a, a, a pull signal the uh, down to uh, um, all grades, uh, 45, uh, 35, 135. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you very much, Joan. Okay. Okay, well, see you next Thursday. Bye bye. Okay, thank you. Bye. See. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye. bye. Happy. Are you there? Yes. Este, podemos eh, utilizar este tiempo para conversar un rato de los resultados. Sí, claro. Vale. Perfecto. Bien, viste la las gráficas que te, que te envié. Sí, están muy buenas. A ver, ¿querés compartirme las gráficas? Las vemos ahí un poquito. A ver, déjame ver dónde están. Dame un minutito porque se, se quedó sin batería la... Se quedó sin batería la la computadora y le cuesta reanimarse de nuevo. ¿Quieres que las